For more than 40 years, Tom Pulberezny was a fixture at AirVenture. Hello everyone, it's Russ Niles reporting for AvWeb at EAA AirVenture 2015. He's been absent for four years since his uh, sort of uncomfortable retirement uh, in 2011, and Tom Pulberezny was back, driving around in Red 3. We joined him for a little while, and he was not short on advice for the people who now run what used to be his show. In some ways, it was like he'd never left. But a lot of people had noticed his absence and lit up when they saw him driving around. Well, Red 3 sits in the museum, and I think that's the right place for it. I mean, it's, it's fun every time I go into the museum to see it there. And the EAA was gracious enough to, to pull it out since Tom's here for a couple of days. Pull it out and say, yep, the right place is for Tom in it, driving around this field. You know, I've been gone four years, and sometimes you wonder how much changed. What hasn't changed is the people. Uh, we've been stopped by the exhibit areas, we've stopped by the home builders areas, we've stopped in a lot of places, and it's been great to renew friendships and, and have the sincere emotion of people who say it's great to see you back. Right now there's roughly, what, 600,000 pilots, and we look back at when there was 800, 850,000. That was a false number, because you had the GI Bill, you had World War II, you had a lot of things that pumped that number up. We're kind of at the number we should have been all the way along. So having said that, if we don't, if, if the aviation community doesn't change the way it, it reaches out to people and engages them, it's going to atrophy slowly away. What's the nicest thing that somebody said to you today? Um, you know, Russ, I don't think it's what people have said, it, it's, the, it's the emotion. You know, sometimes when, when you meet somebody and they talk to you, it's how they say it, not what they say. It's, it's, their, it's the, maybe the little tear in their eye. Uh, the smile, you know, the sincerity of their comment. So I look, at, like, drive through here and look at this. It all worked. All that, all that planning, all that uh, working with the volunteers. It, it's, it's worked well. It's, it's created a, a home for aviation that, if it's ever lost, it'll never be recreated again. There'll never be another Oshkosh. You know, I was here for 42 years, and overall, going back to 1953, for almost 60 years of my life. So I know the organization pretty well inside now from the standpoint of culture and operations. And a couple of observations. Number one is that it's gone through some change in leadership since my departure. And through those changes, it's not had a, essentially a full-time leader, a full-time leader for almost four years. And so my observation is that's got to be rectified because you can't lead any organization or association without having somebody there on a daily basis to monitor and, and provide guidance so that the board can hold that person or individual accountable for the strategies and policies of the organization. That Oshkosh is healthy because of the personnel here, the people, the volunteers. But again, the volunteers, like anything else, need to be in engaged, encouraged, and so forth. And I want to, I, my strongest encouragement is to be sure that you bring in the right full-time leadership that can, can, can motivate that passion. You know, EA is a culture. EA is an organization of high standards and cleanliness that my dad established and I worked hard to continue on after I took over. And uh, that's, that's the important thing that once lost, you can never get it back again. And whether I come back again in the future, I don't know. I, I, I would like to possibly, but uh, I'm here because Dale Clapmore and Sears invited my family here. Uh, what happens in the future, time, time will tell. This has been Russ Niles reporting for AvWeb. Thanks for watching.